How's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to react to when an object changes in JavaScript. Now, this here is going to be achieved using the proxy object and I've got a whole video dedicated to proxies. If you're interested in watching it, I'll leave it in the top right corner of this one. But if you're only interested in how to react to property changes and seeing a practical example involving how to update um, a page uh, UI based on an object changes, then uh, stick around to watch this one. So right here, I've got this simple index.html document and a JavaScript file linked up to it. And it looks something like this in the browser. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we first need an object to watch uh, the changes on. So let's make a new constant here called state equal to a new JavaScript object. And then within here, I'm going to be having two properties. Uh, the first one's going to be a title. I'll set this one to be something like example title. And second being a summary with some text just saying this is the page summary. So the intention here eventually once we get to the practical example is this here represents what gets displayed on the page within an h1 and a simple paragraph tag. But for now, we can treat this as any standard object just like you might have in your own code. Okay, so how do we now watch for changes? How do we react to when, for example, I say state.title equals, how can I react to that change? Well, like I said, we're going to be taking advantage of JavaScript proxies. So a proxy is going to wrap an object and you're able to intercept any of the uh, operations that get performed on the object using uh, things called uh, a trap. Okay, so in this case here, we're interested in the set trap because when you say, for example, you know, state.title equals, that is a set operation. So we want the set trap. Okay, so within here, we're going to now say const state proxy is equal to a new proxy just like this and then within here we need to provide the target object so which object are we going to wrap well we're going to wrap the state object and then as the second argument you provide a handler uh, this here is represented by a standard javascript object itself but this one here is where you're going to specify all of your rules and your traps okay so like I said just earlier, we want the set trap. So let's say set just like this, and you're going to uh, receive uh, the object itself, uh, the property which has changed, and the value which we're trying to set um, the property to. Okay, so I'm going to stop here very shortly and just uh, go in the console and test this code out just to make it a little bit easier to understand. But right here, I'm just going to say console.log and I'm going to say something such as uh, property uh, and then I'm going to say here using string templates, I'm going to say property prop has uh, is wanting to change to and then say here value. So. This just means, look, when you try and set a property, it's going to intercept the set operation and it's going to say console log property prop. So for example, title, property title is wanting to change to and then the value. So let's now say state proxy. So targeting the proxy object dot title because you wrap the state object, you get autocomplete for the properties on it. So state proxy dot title is equal to then say something such as new title. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we get this console log. Property title is wanting to change to new title. Now, I'm going to say state, just to see what it currently looks like. As we can see, I did say uh, state proxy.title is equal to new title, but the object's title is still the old value. So essentially, all we're doing here is we're just detecting the change. We're detecting the, uh, the intent to change the value of the title property. And that is, maybe that's all you actually need um, out of this video. If not, keep watching, right? Because we're now gonna have a look at actually proceeding with that change of property. 
okay? Because we intercepted it. We're sort of overriding it. We need to now actually make it happen, right? So we can say here, object, because remember, object itself, this OBJ here, this, this uh, object, this here represents the actual state which you pass in, the target object. So object, then using bracket annotation, so we can uh, provide here the prop, right? Object for that property is equal to value. So we're manually setting that value. And this goes for any of them. If I say state proxy dot summary is equal to a new summary like this, of course, this code here is gonna run, but uh, yeah, this code is uh, gonna work for any property which you are trying to change. Then to assert that uh, the property change was successful, we're gonna return true. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and now we get the same console log, but if I say state and log it out, we get that changed title, new title. So that has now gone through because once we've intercepted the operation, we are setting it just like it would originally do without it being wrapped inside a proxy, if that makes sense. Okay, great. So we've seen how we can use a proxy to, you know, uh, intercept and react to when uh, the property, sorry, the object changes. Uh, what about uh, the fact that, or let's let's consider the fact that we've got access to this original state object as well. Okay, so this just means that I can say, for example, state dot title is equal to, and then say something like a brand new title, because I'm calling state dot and not proxy state dot, remember there's two, sorry, state proxy dot, there's two versions, right? State proxy and the original state. Because I'm calling the original state dot title, press enter, we don't get that console log. So you're essentially bypassing the proxy completely as if this code doesn't even exist if you say state dot title equal to right now do you want to do that in most cases i would say in 99 percent of cases you probably don't want that ability so what do you do well instead of having a constant or a variable for your original target object you may instead choose to uh, provide it inside the proxy constructor itself this just means i can copy this here and paste it within here then I can remove the, uh, the state constant and now I can make it a bit cleaner by simply renaming this to be state. So now our state is a proxy object. Again, we pass in the target as an object literal. So passing directly in, this means we have that full coverage and essentially it makes it um, almost impossible for you to change that state without... Uh, yeah, going through the proxy and going through your rules, if you have any rules, right? Um, but of course, in this case here, react to when those changes happen. You're able to do that, right? Fantastic. So we have the code working back in the browser. Just, just to confirm here, if I type it state here, it's a proxy object, but it works like a normal object. You can just say state.title and get the value. That's still going to be perfectly fine, even though it's a proxy object. So now we're going to have a look at a more practical example of uh, when you might want to react to object changes. In this case here, we're going to be updating the UI whenever the value of one of these things changes. Okay, so how is this going to work? Well, firstly, I want to make a default state of the UI. Okay, so the page here is going to have a title and a summary paragraph. Let's set the defaults for those values. We're going to say const default state is equal to then provide an object. We're just going to simply copy what I've got here uh, in my previous example. So paste that inside there. This is our default state. How do we get this default state in the proxy? Well, we can take advantage of object destructuring to say uh, dot 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 default state. My, uh, sorry, my, my mistake, what I meant to say was uh, the spread syntax, so triple dot, and we are, yeah, essentially uh, making a copy of that default state, but this here is technically still a new object, right? So we have essentially the same thing that we just had uh, prior to the default state. We're simply now having a separate place to store that. It makes it a bit cleaner to work with, 
okay? So now, when the page first loads up, what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to update the UI to show what the current state is. So firstly, let's go back inside the index.html and we're gonna make a new paragraph tag here with an ID of summary, just like this. And I'm also gonna add the ID of, uh, let's do title, so these match up, there we go, title to the H1. Inside here, I'm going to say loading for both of these HTML elements, just like this. Save this back in the browser, and we get this right here. Fantastic. Let's now render out this default state. We're gonna say uh, const render, so make a new function dedicated to rendering out the current state, equal to, and then provide here a function which accepts uh, the state object. So of course, one of these here, right? We're now gonna say document.getElementById. Let's target the ID of title. Dot text content is equal to state.title. And the same thing goes for the summary. So yeah, grab onto both the title and summary elements and set their text content to their respective uh, or their corresponding state properties. Okay, now on page load, we can just say render and pass in the current state just like this. Save this back in the browser and we get this right here. So we have that default state being rendered out. Now you might uh, have a feeling of what I'm gonna do next. And that is of course, when you update uh, update the uh, one of these properties, we're gonna re-render the uh, the UI. So we'll say here, once the object property has been set, we can say render and then pass in the object because once again, the object refers to the currently targeted object. In other words, in this case, the state. So pass the new state and call the render function. Save this back in the browser. I'm now going to update one of these properties. We can say state.title is equal to a brand new title. Press enter and there we go. It changes to that new title. So do I recommend you do this to build your UIs? Well, maybe, it just depends how you structure it. Obviously, you wanna do a bit more uh, you know, due diligence, make sure you have validation in place, make sure it's structured correctly, but just a quick example of what you can do um, you know, if you wish to use a proxy object to, of course, watch for uh, changes in your JavaScript code. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.